The Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. bicycle for his birthday Saturday. I need $75. <laughs> oh, boy, are you a dreamer, thinking you're going to find $75 an hour sofa. Well, I could hardly go rooting through the sofas at the Rockefellers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, nothing. Whatever happened to money falling out of men's pants? Whatever happened to men? <laughs> uh, Viv, no, I can't. Why not? I don't have $75. Oh. Didn't Mr. Barnstall send you your allotment from the bank this month? Yes, he did. What'd you do with it? I threw it away foolishly on groceries. <laughs> <laughs> what about Chris's piggy bank? It's empty. That poor pig was born with a table knife in its back. <laughs> oh, dear, here comes Mr. Barnstall. Oh, I wonder what I've done wrong this time. What makes you think you've done something wrong? He's smiling. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Barnstall. Good morning, Michael. Mr. Barnstall. Well, it's nice to see you. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Would you care for a cup of coffee? Mrs. Carmichael, I'm here on bank business. This is not a social call. Well, I wasn't going to drag out the party hats and the nut cups. <laughs> I'm uh, here about your property tax. There seems to oh, be... Oh, well, a... would you excuse me, please? I couldn't stand another one of your financial rumbles. <laughs> now, about your, your property tax, there's a little problem about a missing signature. Not this year, there isn't. I specifically remember signing in all four places on all four copies. Bully. My entire department wants to thank you. And I'm absolutely certain that I enclosed the check. You did. That's what you forgot to sign. <laughs> That's exactly what I said when I opened the mail this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. I'll see that it doesn't happen next year. Let us hope so. Uh, Mr. Barnstall, while you're here, could I ask you a question? Well? By any chance, could I have a $75 advance on my next month's allowance? Uh, maybe I could borrow $75 from the bank? <laughs> Perhaps you could give me a $75 loan? <laughs> well, good, you're alive. And kicking, and the answer is no. But I really need the money, Mr. Barnsdall. Look into your heart and grant me this one thing. I'm sorry, Mrs. Carmichael. I'm sorry, Mrs. Carmichael. You're not sorry and you know it. You're the meanest banker in the whole world. Allow me to quote from your husband's will, section six, paragraph three. In no event shall you jeopardize my wife's financial position by advancing her small loans, even though she may, one, wheedle, two, lose her temper. He said all that in the will? It's all here in glorious black and white. <laughs> but I want it so I could buy Jerry a bicycle. He's got his little heart set on it. But I guess he'll never know the joy of riding down the street like the rest of the kids. Ah! <laughs> and three, she will undoubtedly resort to crying. Boy, he covered everything. <laughs> In the midst of all that bogus weeping, did I understand you to say you wanted the money to get Jerry a bicycle? Yes, that's right. 
Oh, well, that's an entirely different thing. Oh, you're wonderful! <laughs> Boy, they don't have rumbles like they used to. <laughs> he said that he'd give me the money to buy Jerry's bicycle. That's wonderful! Isn't that great? <laughs> tut, 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 tut. What are you tut tut tutting about? That isn't what I meant at all. What I meant was that this time you've got a good reason for wanting the money. And I was about to make a suggestion. Oh, what is it? Why don't you get a part-time job? <laughs> a job? What can she do? Well, that's a very good question. There isn't too much demand for a reckless spender. Oh, wait a minute. I did go to secretarial school. But, of course, that was some time ago. Well, there you are. There are lots of calls for part-time secretaries. There are. Well, only yesterday, Mr. Irwin, a lawyer in New York, asked me if I knew of a secretary to fill in for a week. Well, there you are. Could you recommend me? Are you a good secretary? Am I a good secretary? I asked you first. <laughs> I'll have you know I was tops in my secretarial class. <coughs> well, all right. I'll talk to my friend, Mr. Irwin. I'll let you know what he has to say. Mr. Barnes, though. Yes? You're wonderful. Please, Mrs. Carmichael. Bankers don't hug. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! I got my money. Now, let's see. What'll I wear the first day I go to work? You haven't even got the job yet. Oh, I will. Lucy, were you really top of your class at secretarial school? Sure I was. Here, how's this? I finally finished it. That'll be fine. How many were there in the class? What's that got to do with it? How many? Two. <laughs> but I was top. Oh, sure. How's this look? That looks fine. Where'd you stand in your knitting class? You got a thread here. Be careful. What'd you knit this out of? Bailing wire? Here, give it to me. I'll fix it later. Be sure to do it. Yeah. Lucy? Yeah? What makes you think you can handle a job? It's been 15 years since you went to secretarial school. Oh, typing and shorthand never change. It's just rat-a-tat-tat -tat and squiggly, squiggly. <laughs> Lucy Carmichael, and I skipped breakfast, so I get here on time, but my commuter train was late, and then I got off at the wrong subway station, and I had to run back three or four blocks. How do you do? Well, how do you do? I'm Miss Massey. How do you do, Miss Massey? Well, I'm all ready to go to work. Well, let me see. Before, uh, before I leave, let me point out a few things to you. This is your intercom, and these are the switches. The intercom and the switches. Well, of course, you know how to work it. Oh, yes, it's sure good to see one of those things again. <laughs> now, there is your electric pencil sharpener. Oh, and we just got a brand new electric typewriter. Oh, I hope you know how to use it. Oh, sure, doesn't everybody? <laughs> you know, frankly, I've had a little trouble getting accustomed to using the uh, light touch. Oh, so did I at first. Yeah. Oh, good morning, Miss Irwin. This is Mrs. Carmichael. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Irwin? Mr. Barnes Stahl certainly recommended you very highly. He said you were the first in your secretarial class. Yes, sir, I was. Well, I'm sure you won't find it very difficult here this week. And Miss Massey, have a very wonderful vacation. Thank you, Mr. Irwin. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Well, thanks very much for all the things that you told me, Miss Massey, and you have a wonderful vacation, and don't you worry about a thing. Good luck. Bye-bye.
This is Carmichael. Yes, sir. I'd like you to take dictation. I'll be right in, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir, but that little gadget doesn't seem to work. That little gadget is merely for signaling. You're supposed to pick up the phone and answer it. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Now, I want you to take a letter. It's very short. I'll dictate it here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> this letter is going to Whitfield, Hammond, and Warwick. What? Oh. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir? <clears throat> this letter is going to Whitfield, Hammond, and Warwick. What? <laughs> perhaps, uh, perhaps we can save time if you take it directly on the typewriter. Oh. <laughs> on the typewriter, sir? Yes, that thing right there. <laughs> Yes, sir. Got that? <laughs> well, uh, just a second, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, what are you doing? Well, this electric typewriter does not seem to have a light touch, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it does, once you turn it on. <laughs> Whitfield, Hammond, and Warwick. Mrs. Uh, Carmichael, I, I think I'll go telephone Whitfield, Hammond, and Warwick. Would you like to have me get them for you, sir? No, 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 no. Just get me some water. Th I think I'll better take a aspirin. <laughs> Carmichael, what are you doing now? Well, I, I was trying to reach the, the intercom so I could talk to you on the phone and get you a drink of water. I see. Can I have my water now? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you see, sir, I... 
I tried to get your water and the faucet was stuck and, 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 I, and I, then I hit it with my shoe and it broke off and then all the water was, so I, I just took some of the cups and filled them up and, and then I had to drink the water and my, the water is filling, isn't it? <laughs> And then you you buzzed on the intercom, and I, well, I, I I really don't mind standing here with my finger over the hole until you can get a repair man to fix it. I really don't. This is not going to work out. Oh, oh Mr. Irwin, don't fire me, please. I know I'll get better as I go along. You see, I really need the job because I need the money to buy a bicycle. Good. <laughs> buy a bicycle. I think you're much better suited for a paper route. <laughs> no, no, it's not for me. The, the bicycle's for my little boy. I'm afraid not. It's for his birthday. Please, please give me another chance. All right, Mrs. Carmichael. We'll try once more, but just once. Oh, you're a good soul. <laughs> now, do you think you could handle a little errand? Oh, yes, I'm very good at errands. All right, here's what to do. <laughs> now, you go to this office at this address. Yes, sir. And pick up the Madison contracts that they have waiting there for me. Yes. And bring the contracts to the Cavalier restaurant on Park Avenue, where I'll be having lunch with Mr. Madison. Right, the Cavalier Restaurant on Madison Avenue with Mr. Park. Oh. Ah, lunch at the Madison Avenue on Park with Mr. Cavalier. Mrs. Ah, he's really got his heart set on that bicycle. He's already bought the horn. Beep, beep. Really, yes. All right, I'll write the whole thing down for you. Thank you. And be sure you get there. By 12.30 sharp. Yes, sir, I will, sir. Oh, oh, that means I have a lot more time. I can stay here and help you around the office. No, 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 no. <laughs> Why don't you go now and, and have a nice long lunch hour? Good idea. I'll have time to buy the bicycle. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, Carmichael. Yes? I have an idea <clears throat> that you might possibly need this. Oh, of course. Th thank you, sir. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll see you at 12.30. Don't forget to empty the bucket. <laughs> You're being so nice. You get it there safely now, okay? Yes, All right.
for one? <laughs> or would you prefer to sit at the bar? I'm not staying. I would just like you to have give this to Mr. Irwin. He's having lunch here. Oh, you're his secretary. Yes, I'm Mrs. Carmichael. Well, he just called and said he would be a little late and asked for you to wait for him. Oh, dear, I can't wait. You but just he, give it to him when he comes but in. But he definitely said for you to wait. Something about some papers being signed. Then you were supposed to take them to the bank before three. Oh, dear, what am I going to do? Well, um, I could give you a table in the corner. Oh, all right, thank you. This way, please. <laughs> Would you like something to eat? Oh, yes, I'm just famished. I haven't had any breakfast or any lunch. What do you have that's ready? I don't have much time. Well, may I suggest a bowl of onion soup? It's our specialty. That would be great. That'll fill me up. All righty, I'll be right back with it. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And don't worry about a thing. I'll let you know when Mr. Irwin gets here. Okay, he'll be with a Mr. Madison. All righty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the onion soup and all that mess. But why, if Mr. Irwin was so mad at you, did he give you a full week's salary? I'm not sure. All he said was he couldn't stand to see a grown kangaroo cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you gathered quite a crowd at that restaurant. I gathered a much larger crowd when I went back to the toy store and got my tail caught in a revolving door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, you've had quite a day. I sure have. Oh, Jerry Carmichael, that's supposed to be a surprise for your birthday Saturday. Let me write it down. I promise I'll be surprised Saturday. Oh, all right, honey. Happy birthday, dear. Happy birthday, darling. Thanks. Hey, Sherman, Chris, come see my new boy. <laughs> yeah, I had quite a day, but it was worth it. Did you see his face? I sure did.
The Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. For money. Oh. What do you need money for this time? Jerry is just dying to have a bicycle for his birthday Saturday. I need $75. <laughs> oh, boy, are you a dreamer, thinking you're going to find $75 an hour sofa. Well, I could hardly go rooting through the sofas at the Rockefellers. <laughs> oh, dear, nothing. Whatever happened to money falling out of men's pants? Whatever happened to men? <laughs> uh, Viv, no, I can't. Why not? I don't have $75. Oh. Didn't Mr. Barnstall send you your allotment from the bank this month? Yes, he did. What'd you do with it? I threw it away foolishly on groceries. <laughs> <laughs> what about Chris's piggy bank? It's empty. That poor pig was born with a table knife in its back. <laughs> Oh, I wonder what I've done wrong this time. What makes you think you've done something wrong? He's smiling. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Barnstall. Good morning, Mr. Barnstall. Well, it's nice to see you. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Would you care for a cup of coffee? Mrs. Carmichael, I'm here on bank business. This is not a social call. Well, I wasn't going to drag out the party hats and the nut cups. <laughs> I'm uh, here about your property tax. There seems to oh, be... Oh, well, a... would you excuse me, please? I couldn't stand another one of your financial rumbles. Now, about your... your...